this train and these classic trolleys make up the same transit line. In this video, we will be writing the red line of the Boston subway, stopping along the way to point out some interesting features before transferring to the Ashmont Mattapan High Speed Line, an extension of the red line. Hi everyone and welcome to Harvard. Harvard is located in Cambridge, Massachusetts, just across the river from Boston. And no, I don't go here, but it's still such a beautiful place to visit. And if you ever travel to Boston, I highly recommend putting Harvard on your list of things to see. Harvard is perhaps the most famous of all the Ivy League schools in the US. It opened in 1636 and is well known particularly for its law school, which, aside from its many prestigious alumni, was also the setting for the early 2000s chick flick Legally Blonde, which, by the way, grossed almost $142 million. What, like it's hard? This is Harvard's freshman dining hall. Wow. Just wow. Harvard is in Cambridge, Massachusetts, just across the Charles River from Boston. It is served by Boston Subway Network at Harvard Square Station on the Red Line. Now we're here at Harvard Station and today I want to show you one of the weird features of the Boston Subway. So let's head down into the station, tap in with our Charlie card, and uh, take the Red Line to the terminal station of Ashmont. Now Harvard Square is a strange station. First of all, check out this awesome underground bus station. Eight different routes go underground into this tunnel, which is exclusively for buses, to provide a sheltered transfer to the red line. Two platforms are stacked on top of each other, with northbound buses stopping on the top floor and southbound buses on the bottom. Well, that's kind of cool. Of course, Lindsay's traveling with me because it's always fun to travel with her. This tunnel opened in 1923, but for streetcars. Though those have disappeared a long time ago, until March 2022, electric trolley buses used this tunnel as well. We were here in May 2022, so we missed the trolley buses only by two months. Bummer. The main concourse for Harvard Square Station is located right under the actual Harvard Square. Here are the ticket machines and the fare gates leading to the subway platforms. And of course, this is Massachusetts, so of course there's a Dunkin' Donuts. Let's use our Charlie card, loaded with a day pass, to head to the platforms. All right, uh, we need inbound, so that's the lower floor. The subway platforms are arranged in the same way as the bus platforms. Downtown bound trains leave from the bottom floor while the trains bound for Alewife depart right above. Both are reached by a long ramp, which is good for accessibility. Everything feels very light and spacious for an underground station. Now the red line has two branches at its southern end, and generally trains will alternate between the two terminals. We are headed to Ashmont today, but we'll go ahead and board this Braintree bound train for now. The first thing I noticed about these trains is just how incredibly big they are. I've grown used to Chicago's trains, which are basically streetcar sized. The trains were also clean with no disruptive passengers. Entering Kendall MIT. MIT so you might be wondering why the heck Kendall MIT, the station looks drab. It kind of does, but the MBTA had this big art on the subway project a few years ago, and Kendall MIT is one of the stations that has such an art installation, and this one is actually interactive. 
so see that thing hanging in the middle between the two tracks? That is actually a set of chimes. And there should be somewhere on the platform here where we can play them. I know some of them might be out of commission, but look for some levers. See, this is why I take Lindsay with me wherever I go, because she is so much smarter than me. Oh, you found... Here's the second art piece. Kind of looks like they even took the thing off. Now we're on a train headed to Ashmont. There are still some old gems riding around on the Boston subway, with some trains dating back to 1969. The newest trains on the red line, which we unfortunately didn't see, entered service in 2021. Immediately after Kendall MIT, we emerged to the surface, crossing the Charles River. This might be one of my favorite sections on the line. The first segment of the red line opened in 1912, relatively late compared to the other subway lines in Boston. The initial segment ran from Harvard into Boston. It was given the color red in 1965 because Harvard's school color is maroon. Now these old cars make a very interesting noise when the doors close. Here it is again since you liked it so much. In downtown Boston, connections are available to all the other subway lines. Park Street has a platform layout known as the Spanish Solution, where there are two tracks, both with side platforms, but also with an island platform in the middle. South Station offers transfers to the Silver Line, MBTA commuter rail trains, and Amtrak trains. What's that? You wanted to hear the door closing beep again? All right, here you go. Eventually, after Andrew Station, we emerge back onto the surface, where we will stay for the rest of our trip. The tracks next to us are used by two MBTA commuter rail lines, as well as their Cape Flyer Express service to Cape Cod. JFK University of Massachusetts is the final stop before the two branches split. Immediately after the station, the Braintree branch crosses over the commuter rail tracks and comes back down on the other side. While our train stops at Saban Hill, both the commuter rail tracks and the Braintree branch run parallel to us, but they don't stop here. We finally branch off, heading southwest, and two stops later, we arrive at Ashmont.
Let's take another look at this map. It looks like the Ashment branch extends farther to Metapan. The thin red line means that we have to change trains at Ashmont. The text underneath says Ashmont Metapan High Speed Line. A high speed line? You mean like a bullet train? Does Boston subway system have high speed rail in it? Mmm, not quite. Let's head over to the Ashmont Metapan High Speed Line to find out. So immediately outside of the train station, there's a bus station. And over there, see some electric wires in the distance? That's where we're going. That's right, the Ashman Mattapan High Speed Line has PCC trolleys. Very, very old streetcar trains. Yes, the extension of the Boston Red Line is a classic trolley line known as the Ashman Mattapan High Speed Line. You have to admit, this is really cool. Before discussing the trip, let's take a look at the interior of these PCC streetcars. These were built in 1945 and 1946, so basically they're baby boomers. The most recent rebuild was in 2005. The seats are very hard because the journeys on this line are short. Since the trams are one directional, passengers can look out the back window. I'm a big fan of these little round ceiling lights, and I would love to see a transit agency recreate them and incorporate them into a modern vehicle design. One exterior feature is that these trams carry an old MBTA logo instead of the current circle with a T in it. Now back to the journey. Because the trolleys are one directional, they have to use turning loops at both ends of the line. Here at Ashman, passengers board before the loop. Well, at Mattapan, the trolleys loop before they pick up passengers. The line is only 2.5 miles long, with six stops between the two termini. Next stop, Cedar Grove! Despite the platforms being low and the trolleys having steps to board, all but one of the stations have ramps that passengers in wheelchairs can use. Now let's take a listen to the motor noise of these ancient PCCs. Interestingly, despite being a streetcar, the line only has two railroad crossings. This is in part thanks to the line's history. So what exactly is that history? For that we have to go back to 1845, when the Old Colony Railroad opened between Boston and Plymouth. Soon there was a branch line from Neponset to Mattapan. Though the branch was built by a different company, it was soon absorbed into the old colony network. In the 1870s, another branch was created to bypass Neponset. The Shawmut branch brought commuter trains directly from Boston to Mattapan. Later, the old colony was bought by the New York, New Haven, and Hartford Railroad. However, by the 1920s, streetcars were proving to be more popular in Boston, and the New Haven was losing many of their passengers. At the same time, the Boston Elevated Railroad, a predecessor to the current subway, 
wanted to extend its line from Harvard into Dorchester. It was decided that these trains would take over from the commuter rail and serve Ashment directly. This was completed in 1928. But what about Mattapan? Heavy rail was deemed too expensive for this section, so in 1929 this part of the line reopened as a trolley, basically light rail, first to Milton and later in the year to Mattapan. And that's how we have the situation we have today. The Red Line subway takes over former commuter rail services to Ashmont and Braintree, the trolleys carry people to Mattapan, and the MBTA Kingston line runs down the rest of the old commuter rail corridor. I think it's so cool that these antiques still run in regularly scheduled service and not just as museum pieces. Not all trams are that lucky, however. You'll notice that the trolley we rode is missing some details on its front end, and the side looks a little beat up. Over in the yard behind the station, you can see a tram that was damaged beyond repair in a crash. It's kind of sad to see those skeletons sitting around. There are plans to replace the PCCs with light rail vehicles similar to those on the Green Line. However, any such change will require severe construction to the tracks, so it remains to be seen if and when the fleet renewal will take place. So obviously the Red Line was fun in and of itself, but this Ashman Madame Pan High Speed Line Honestly, if I came to Boston just for that, I would have already had a good time. It, it was fun. These old, old trolley cars, so it's a piece of history, and the line is so beautiful. There's green trees everywhere. I definitely recommend taking it in the spring, summer, or fall. All in all, it took maybe 10 minutes. Um, so it was a quick ride. We paid for a ticket, but we didn't really see anyone checking either. So, yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to Trains Are Awesome. We have more cool content from Boston coming next week. So we'll see you then.